So today I want to show you piece of the history that's legendary Jeep SRT and it's a 2012 Grand Cherokee SRT 6.4 Hemi and especially this car has a kind of weird history weird story not the weird but it's not unusual it's not the one you can see online right now for sale maybe there is some of them also but especially this car it was bought brand new back in 2012 and it just gone from the united states it's been gone to the japan and uh, this 10 year 11 years uh the car was used as a fg cruiser in japan somebody was driving taking care of that and now it came back, back in uh, June 2023, came back from Japan to United States. And now it's going to be sooner or later for sale on the website. That's cool. I mean, the condition of the car right now for 11 years old, it's just an amazing. All the paint inside, outside, uh, engine transmission, suspension, and the way it looks, the way it feels, it's just super nice and cool. It's really hard to find on the US market the car like this, because usually people do not take care of that much because again there is a lot of expensive parts there is a lot of expensive maintenance you have to do but in general it's hard i mean the life is kind of hard for all of us and it's it's more complicated to take care about the car like this because it's not only and i would say the family guy like me, for example, would not buy this kind of car to keep it in the family all day long. It's not that comfortable, especially for the road trips. Plus, you have a lot of things to do. So basically, daily driving car like this, you have to spend money and time on that, but you just don't have it simply as that. So what we got here, we do have the full-size SUV. It's a five seats, not seven. It is a nice uh, rims on that. And it is a kind of body kit, but it's not body kit actually. It is a SRT with different bumpers and those fender flares on it and rocker panels. But besides this, it has a suspension. The suspension, the original one, uh, it's kind of tight and sporty, but on the top of that, somebody already replaced the springs and the car got lower it a little bit. So it makes it more harder to drive it on the street as a daily driving car, but it makes much better the car itself to drive it on the freeway or somebody somewhere on the track. As you probably can see on the picture from the camera, the car is so shiny. It's been polished, it was not repainted, but the, like I said, the condition of the paint is just insanely cool and clean. Usually, again, by the time of right now, if it's 2012 and the car uh, been used somewhere in the California, Texas states, the paint on the top would fade it a lot but not this one so they were taking care about that and probably i think since the car is so expensive in japan and it's been there i think it was garaged or it's been covered all the time even the headlights they're in amazing condition and they still original so what are you getting if you buy the car like this for the money whatever it's cost right now you get an First of all, you get a huge piece of history because the V8 engines, the idea of the SRT, super muscle American cars, it's just going to be the part of the history, nothing else. Everything is changing, life is changing, and the price of the gas is going up. So basically, you buy this car, you just keep spending money on the gas, and believe me or not, you're going to spend a lot of money because especially during the first couple of weeks of having this car, you're going to keep pushing it keep punching it, keep stepping the gas and your credit card just gonna keep going with the balance on it and it's worth it i mean every dollar you're gonna spend for the gas by driving this car it's gonna worth it your uh your emotions your feelings it's just gonna be insane super cool super nice and uh there is a lot of things you can compare to this car but it, there's a lot of cars you cannot buy like that and to buy the suv which is super performed right now what you can buy amg with 2.0 engine i mean uh, it's not the same okay audi sq whatever 8 v8 4.0 like lamborghini engine no it's not the same so what you can buy right now you can buy the jeep but sooner or later jeep they're gonna be a uh, gun of v8 and i think one or two years more they're gonna produce it and in my opinion, they're going to stop doing it and replace it with something more cheaper and more fuel economy. 
because the same way like the Subaru STI, it's not going to be on the market again just because the emission control, whatever it is policy, it's not compatible anymore and they just kick that car out. So the Subaru say we're not going to produce STI anymore, only as an electric one, not the gas one. So it's kind of sad, but same time, those pieces of history, those cars, they're going to be legendary. They are going to go up in price and again, same car as a Lexus LX. If you do have money, time, you want to buy it, you, you're like looking for one long period of time and there is a piece of history like this for sale and you see the condition, you know the history, you might going to do some uh, research about the car and you bought it. Just buy it. Why not? I mean, when, if not right now, you can find a car like this and keep it and just enjoy it. And you might gonna make some money after some years. So that's cool. That's the one of the point. I like those kind of cars. They are saving your money. They're not saving your money on a gas wise because you get in the energy power feeling, you know, you have the huge whatever you got there to drive this kind of car and to spend a lot of money on that. That's what the people buy in uh, muscle cars. I mean, if you buy in the muscle car and you go in just the grocery, doing some stuff, laundry, whatever, you're going back home, you probably bought the wrong car. You have to buy the Prius. But if you buy in this kind of car, you know what you're gonna do. You know how much money you're gonna spend and it's worth it every single thing worth it so not quite a lot of different things might gonna go bad on this car probably somebody had this car for a long period of time not like me and you do have more experience about what's gonna go bad like pcms this this like the, the battery gonna go dead and your key start stop reading itself so you have to reprogram it or you have to get the new key sometimes even the key getting shorted out because you put it in a coffee or in the tea and now it's not reading you're trying to start it it won't so you might gonna replace it sometimes those cars same as the dodge same as the chrysler i mean all of them they are sensitive about the battery charge so what's going on if you if you keep in this car somewhere in the garage you're not driving it your battery draining right a little bit so there is 11 volt and the system still reading itself you know understanding we're on the alarm we're sitting but if the voltage gonna drop more and more less than 10 less than 4 that's it I mean, the connection between all the units is just gonna get lost and you have to do reprogramming together with the new battery. That's the common issue for all American cars and uh, I do see that a lot, especially on the cheaper cars, Journey, Chrysler 200, 300, but Jeeps, they are the same. So V8 6.4 engine, it is strong, nice engine. They're using it, they used to use it for the trucks and they keep doing it right now. So can you imagine uh, around 2500 has 6.4 engine on it and it's called power wagon right so the car is super fast you can tow a lot of different things on it now they took that engine and put it on the car like this or they put on the car like this and after put it there doesn't matter so but what i what i mean the car itself it's not that heavy as a truck so it was not designed to tow something it's not designed to be the construction car it's just a regular suv and they put super huge 6.4 hemi engine on it in my opinion there is a lot of different things might gonna happen, but if you're gonna keep driving it in the way it's supposed to be and do maintenance on the time, just the simple things, filters, oil, that's it. Maybe spark plugs once in like 80,000 or 100,000 miles. And uh, if it's not crazy, you're not trying to kill the engine, you're not trying to destroy the car, I think this car gonna survive for a long period of time without huge problems for you and for your pocket. That's the cool point. So back in 2012, it was one of the new design for the Jeep. And there is a lot of different things, like I say, from the Mercedes came on this car, like LED lights. They were not present before. Now SRT in 2012, it got it. So what about this? We do have a Distronic Plus and it is still working. I, in my opinion, came from Mercedes. There is nowhere else it might gonna come from because the Mercedes started doing it back in 2004, 2005, maybe even before. But the Mercedes S-Class, the one I had a long time ago, had Distronic Plus and it was S-Class 2004. That's the first time I see uh, Distronic on the car. 
like the Mercedes. So basically the part on this car came from there and it's still working. I don't know if you're going to use it or not. I'm like super air using, using it unless I'm driving the Tesla, which is super, super nice. But on those cars, it's just not understanding. I mean, sometimes it's pushing brakes so hard. Sometimes it's not pushing it at all. Or the last second plus the line keeper on this car is absent and it's not worth it to use it again in my opinion maybe if you're texting someone or you're using your instagram all all the time and you're going through the traffic jam yeah put it on the destroying plus cruise control active cruise control whatever you're going to call it and it's going to work it out perfectly for you so design of this car it's still aggressive it's still even it's a 11 years old car it still doesn't look like it's too old i mean it's kind of modern and that blacked out whatever they cover they painted all the chrome parts on this car and they blacked it out it's super super nice it's just kind of modern style for all the cars because even somebody buying the Civic or Chevy the cheapest one whatever Equinox you do have that option from the factory blacked out most of the cars right now they do have that and if you're not buying it from them you might have to do it or you might want to do it if you're going to get it at the right time because that's that's the option people want it i don't know why but blacked out option it's working for all kind of cars all models and all the years so on this car especially it worked out really good because the way the car looks it's just super nice clean and fresh doesn't look like old so what's going on under the hood by the way the hood itself it is aluminum piece and there is a lot of aftermarket parts available for this car, especially the hood. You can buy the carbon fiber or you can buy the plastic or you just can take it out and leave the engine alone without that. So it's going to get uh, more performance and more cooling for the engine itself. So the engine, if you're going to take a look on that from here, there is, it's a simple engine. There is a intake you can see the throttle body it's so huge it's sitting right here so you you might gonna get problems with that but it's super rare when you might uh and you get in that but the rest of the engine it's just a huge 6.4 and the short block it's an old one it's old design and all this cooling pump and the belts from the first look you might gonna get it's easy to work on it it is on some of the parts like again like a water pump some sensor some hoses you might gonna buy it from Mopar from the dealer because it's not so expensive and you uh, you can replace it yourself like the spark plugs it's not that expensive to do so and you might gonna do it yourself I'm not sure about this car if it has uh, double yeah it is double so it is a double spark plug on each cylinder so basically you have to replace 16 of those but the spark plugs itself i think it's about four and a half dollar from the dealer each one so it's not that big money so what about the filter you can do it yourself not a problem the throttle body you can clean it yourself if you need it even the oil change again a lot of people doing it why not on the driveway just lift it up drain it put it new one the way it's supposed to be saying on the youtube or just google it and that's it so simple car in my opinion if you do have some knowledge about mechanic stuff you can do simply yourself there is not uh, so many difficult parts or places you have to go through to replace any kind of parts needed for maintenance maybe that's one of the point why they designed such a huge space under the hood and even 6.4 v8 sitting here with a lot of empty spaces with a lot of gaps on the left on the right so basically it allows you to do some job yourself that's uh, that's cool i mean whoever designed it, whoever produced it they had that opinion in their mind maybe the radiator you have to spend a little bit time on it and play with that because the radiator and the part of the cooling system again if your pump might gonna leak your uh one of the hoses might gonna leak the radiator might gonna crack because the because the pressure is too high because it's too hot outside the old plastic just gonna start breaking apart and you have to do it again if you have time you have some friends and some beer you can do it yourself not a big deal so it's a SUV with huge trunk compartment. What it's usually supposed to be used for, for a lot of different stuff, whatever you need for the family. But I think what it's gonna be looks like 
in a year or so it's going to look like there is a original springs inside there is original intake and there is original exhaust just hanging inside the trunk area just because it's already straight piped and zero <laughs> zero resistance whatever intake stuff for 50 bucks from ebay is going to be installed on this car but not right now it's still in original condition and in original great shape <laughs> So probably you're gonna feel it by camera how the aftermarket suspension works. So the the springs on this car right now they are super tight uh, because it is a SRT. So somebody made it the way it's supposed to be. But since the car from Japan, uh, you can imagine what's the road condition over there. It's just super flat, and uh, you can do that on the car like that in Japan. But in my opinion, you cannot do that with this car in Los Angeles because somehow the road's not flat and uh, by doing that you just ruining the whole car I would go back to the stock that's for sure because it's not comfortable driving uh, besides that you do have a control over the car on a high speed on the freeway but again you do not have a control over the car uh, in the streets in the regular uh, daily driving condition it's just bumpy you just jumping from one side to the other you're trying to control it and your steering wheel just going the same way left and right so you have to uh, you have to force it to make it going straight so what about the interior the interior it's super nice super clean car has like I say 57,000 miles only and that's the condition for 57 so the dashboard is still really good condition there is nothing there is nothing uh, sticking out or falling apart it's not the McLaren eventually uh, all the plastic all the carbon carbon fiber plastic whatever it is it's still there the clear not gone it's drying a little bit so the glue going out and but it's not falling apart yet that's the good point the sound system again as you can see it's off the market and I'm gonna tell you why there is a different radio frequency so basically the numbers of the radio in Japan and United States are different that's why when this car brand new went to Japan back in 2012 they just replaced it so they took the original one out and they put the one supposed to be uh, working for the Japan and uh, probably it's much better because the Japanese sound system much much improved so what's happened next back in this year beginning of this year somebody bought it not somebody I know who uh, they bought it in Japan at the auction and they ship it back to United States when you're shipping it back to United States if the years of the car allow you to bring it back to the market you don't have to pay any extra fees or the custom fee for the car which already been produced in United States it's been sold in the United States and just went somewhere overseas now it came back but when the car came back there is a problem so the radio whatever used to be installed it is a Japanese so it's, it is a Japanese frequency you cannot use it so basically the guy who bought it and who brought it back to Los Angeles he replaced it on the aftermarket I wouldn't say it's super nice and cool I mean it is uh, it is kind of looks uh, looks I don't know what it is like Mercedes or whatever but it's a big screen it has a lot of different stuff on it but it is a Chinese and I don't like aftermarket at all because aftermarket I think uh, parts especially on a car like that it just ruined the whole car it's supposed to be original whatever it is it was a screen on it navigation or it was just a radio and some buttons so just leave it the way it is because the car especially SRT like that it is keeping value it is appreciating much more if it's all stock original so basically the radio aftermarket the suspension aftermarket and both of them it's not a good point for the car like that that's again that's my opinion but that's what the people want if you want to buy the car like this and you want to keep it you're not going to drive it every day you're just going to drive it sometimes maybe so you want to keep the mileage low and after five ten years you want to sell this car maybe the same price or maybe with profit or you just want to keep it next 30 40 years and sell it for much much more so it's, since it's the second generation of SRT Jeep Grand Cherokee it already has a lot of improvements if you're gonna check with the old one 
at some point maybe one day the same guy gonna bring the old 107 08 and i'm gonna show it to you how the those cars coming back from japan in beautiful conditions i mean the condition of those cars i did see a lot of them chargers and um, the jeeps they just insane i mean the people do take care of them a lot because in japan it's double price for the car there is a, a lot of money you have to spend for the gas and a lot of money you have to spend for the maintenance plus to keep your car basically uh as far as i know maybe i'm mistaken uh maybe you know better so just comment below and tell me i'm wrong uh to have the car in tokyo in japan you're supposed to have the parking garage assigned parking spot you're supposed to pay for that i don't know how much monthly fee so you're going to kind of dmv in tokyo and giving them them the information about you do have a parking spot you're paying for that and you good uh to get the registration otherwise uh in tokyo you're not going to be able to register your car just because you don't have a parking spot and they are so tight on the parking spaces and uh, that's why they do have a lot of small cars so basically they do have their own market they do have a lot of small cars and now you uh mf want to bring this uh v8 6.4 jeep to the tokyo just to to do what i mean to to do the burnout to do some donuts they don't understand they don't want you to do so i mean they are allowing to do the people this way to buy the cars like that but same time you have to pay a lot of fees on the top just because you want to be cool and i think the it is one of the cool point not cool point there is one of the point in japan to have a, a left hand right car especially like that or mercedes or mg or bmw or m uh if you do have a car with left hand drive you probably have a lot of money so because the people around you understand you do paying a lot of money to keep this car years and years next to you so we're going on the freeway we're going about i don't know whatever speed <clears throat> but it has a lot of power at any speed you can punch the gas and the car just flies is it the stable i mean yes it is stable the suspension like i say it's super tight and it's kind of bumpy uh i think we are missing alignment that's what we're gonna do later on but overall it is a beautiful car it handles just insane and it has a lot of power even this car has 6.4 not supercharged uh, engine maybe it has some tune on it but i didn't think so because we just passed the smoke check and it's uh there is no problem with that so basically it's not aftermarket exhaust intake it's all stock uh but there is a lot of option you can do same way like a supercharger you can put it on there is a lot of modifications you have to do but if you want to you can do so beautiful car inside nice to handle it and the seats are comfortable even it's old style design but they still doing the same they're not bad at all so what about the space in the car and actually space on the back that's more than enough space for your kids for your family for five of you not a problem i can reach my kids if i need to if i have to give them some water or some snacks whatever uh is it comfortable yeah it is it's kind of american style rear seat bench and uh there is nothing suspicious about it but what i do like a lot about this car as you can see it is in beautiful condition actually this one it's been redone uh looks like fresh freshly redone armrest yeah because the armrest the quality of the leather whatever they use not leather they use in the the plastic leather for the consoles like that it is always cracking the, so the seats it's in really good condition but this one it is in new condition right now just because it's been redone so all the plastic like i say all the paint it's still original it's not peeling off there is nothing i can say bad about 11 years old car in the condition like that again if i would compare this car to something new like the mercedes for example right the electric one that one just insanely bad and i don't understand why they doing so so what about the what about the price the price for this car right now that's about uh, i don't know you can find it between 30 and 35 thousand i think the new one uh i might mistaken but we can double check it i think the msrp maybe it was roughly about 60 i would say 65 
so it's doubled down for 10 years but it's again it's not that bad there is a lot of cars right now one two years it's losing 50 percent of the value and uh, there is one uh, news block i did already and uh, you're gonna see it later on oh you probably already saw it that's about electric cars what's coming on the market and losing value so quick you cannot even imagine that's just the crazy but again this car uh right now it's going to be about 30 35 right but it has 57,000 miles on it so if you would buy this car 10 years 11 years ago and you would keep it and drive it maybe like five maybe less than 10,000 over those 10 11 years i think right now you can sell this car close to 100,000 not a problem because for sure there is a lot of lovers and there is a lot of people who would buy the car like this because it's not existed anymore and next year two years from now they might gonna stop doing v8 at all because the ev generation coming there is a turbo coming 1.5 1.0 what else i mean in europe there is a lot of car production i mean there is a lot of cars they're using a uh, turbo engine 0 0.6 0 0.7 even the diesel like the smart cars if you're going to check it out 98 99 old smarts for two they used to be that and they're still making them uh hopefully it used to be 0 0.6 turbo engine turbo diesel that's crazy i mean the u.s market never gonna see that kind of engines here just because the gas company they don't want you to do so otherwise why they pumping gas and making it for you six dollars a gallon uh, and you want to drive this beautiful smart uh, 0 0.6 turbo diesel uh, no it's not but v8 itself i think they're gonna change it they're not gonna produce those kind of crazy engines anymore like uh, uh, challenger or charger they say it's gonna be last year uh, of v8 hellcats and all kind of stuff in my opinion they're gonna replace it with like v6 twin turbo or four cylinder four turbo six turbo whatever turbos they're gonna put but those uh, old legendary engines they're gonna go to the history that's the my opinion i might might be wrong might be not but who cares if the car like that still exists and you have money to buy it buy it because when you're going to buy it if not right now uh again if you can want to compare 30,000 price range with what are you going to compare you're going to buy a 4 or you're going to buy the the corolla with all the options or toyota camry is it the same no it's completely not the same are you going to spend more money for the gas on this car just to enjoy your life yes you're going to spend a lot of money a lot so make sure you do have a lot of credit cards you're going to use for the gas because you're probably going to pay later for those nice mistakes you're doing right now so there is a lot of difference between regular grand cherokee and grand cherokee srt one of them that's the cluster the cluster is a little bit different you can see the srt sign on it but besides that there is a different kind of data you can see during your trip during your driving so you you do have that window right now on an older newer one you do have it in the middle like a performance so performance here there is a one one eight yeah one eight mile so there is a performance window on your cluster what you can see you can see a lot of different data like 0 60 you can see your horsepower you can see your torque and there are and and a lot of different parameters of your srt some things what i don't like i hate those master switches those master switches grand caravan style maserati uh, tesla mercedes they all kind of they all kind of cheap you know and this one looks like being replaced looks like it's not the original it is of the market because it feels new it feels like chinese production so what i don't like also i don't like the shifter in the middle i know they change it later on for the different one but it's just an old for 2012 they they could do something else besides that uh but whatever they did it it's already here nothing you can do about it since it's a four by four you do have that transfer case control so what you can do you can do track you can do sport you can do snow or tow mode so there is a lot of different modes you can do which gonna adjust your transfer case depends how you're driving it's gonna react it the same way 
So what else we do have it here is an optional. Optional, there is a power, I mean, there is a steering wheel heater and it is still working. There is a cooled seat, heated seat. And it looks like cooling, it's still working, not a problem. Mercedes style, Mercedes design, and there is a lot of things they took from Mercedes and put it on this car. Since it is a Daimler Chrysler, as you all know, a lot of components they've been using us same. So one of the last cool part I was gonna say, I was gonna say about this car, that's the Brembo brake system. It is super huge, especially on the front. It's just a huge calipers with huge brake pots on it. It is working perfectly from any speed, they perfect. I mean, I try a different speed, it's working super great. <clears throat> I'm gonna put a huge like for this car because they're not gonna be exist anytime soon. So thank you so much guys for watching it. Put some likes, put some comments below and please subscribe. It's really important for me, whatever I'm doing this and that. I want your opinion really bad. See you next time.